What's up everybody, my name is Sawyer Hartman and today I'm going to give you five tips and tricks to help you start taking your portrait photos from images like this and transform them into photos like this. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this video, maybe learn or take something away from it, but let's just jump straight into it. So I wanted to shoot a video all about all the tips that go into actually taking like the perfect portrait photo. So I figured what better way to do it than to bring you along for an entire day of shooting. So today I'm taking you guys on a sick portrait photography mission to the top of Big Bear Mountain with both Justin and my boy Armin. Whee! Sorry, Quinn's oh holding God, the camera man. but he's staying at the bottom. And Anjoique's here too, looking like a champ. So while we are shooting in the snow today, all the tips and tricks we give you can be applied to any location you could possibly be shooting at. Also, massive shout out to our sponsor, Backcountry.com, for hooking up with all of our clothes and for giving us a budget to get out here and start shooting on the actual mountain today. Also, if you don't know who Backcountry.com is, they're a huge online retailer for all outdoor gear and accessories, as well as being huge advocates of everyone getting outside and actually enjoying and experiencing nature. So without further ado, let's just hit the mountain and start shredding. Yeah. High fives, high fives, high fives all around. So the first tip may actually seem really obvious, but you'd be shocked how many photographers just completely blow this step. The clothing that your subject wears should actually be designed to contrast and add a color pop to whatever background you're actually shooting in. I mean, that's actually part of the reason we were all so stoked when we got to partner with Back, get to partner with Backcountry, is they let us pick out a ton of clothes from their website to actually be able to demonstrate this point. So let me kind of show you what I went with and why. So we went Oakley orange goggles, a red jacket with Armin by Mamut because it literally pops against the snow really perfect. But we tried to stick to color tones like red and orange, yellow, like this sick North Face Justin's rocking. And then to actually be able to like show the difference, I chose a camo green jacket from Backcountry, which is really nice, but you might not think color really matters, but as you can see from this photograph of Armin just in a normal black or green jacket versus this photograph where Armin's wearing the bright red, you can see how it just pops, it adds a little bit of life and color to the photo, and it's a step that you really should not be missing anymore. But if you guys have no clue what type of gear you need or anything, Backcountry actually has 24 seven support like all the time and they're called gearheads and they're actually like ex-Olympic athletes and stuff. So you can just message them, they'll point you in the right direction and get you set up. So start designing the color palettes of clothes and all of the accessories before you ever get to set. That way you have an advantage over the other photographers who just forgot to do it. I'm gonna be holding you accountable for that. So if you don't, I'm gonna start calling you out on Instagram because it makes a huge, huge difference. So the next tip has everything to do with creating better photographs that seem to have more story behind them. Nobody wants a photograph that looks posed and uncomfortable and unnatural. So the second tip is all about creating a scene rather than just taking a snapshot. It can literally be as simple as using the props and actions that you would actually find and do in the location you're shooting at. So for example, oh shit, I almost fell over. So for example, here is a photo of my friend Justin standing just posed, trying not to look awkward versus here's a photo of Justin where we actually use the goggles and snowboard to create a scene where it looks like he's hiking back up the mountain for another run. Do you see the difference? I mean, honestly, also, you could even do something as simple as your friend creating a snowball and going to throw it and pushing the camera lens right up into them so that you feel the energy of what it felt like in that moment right before they threw it. These are all normal actions that you do in the snow, wearing clothes and props that you'd have with you, which make for a really, really interesting natural photograph. Sorry, nature is messing up my shot. Now, enough with tips for a second. We're gonna go keep snowboarding until we find the next spot. Enjoy. So, the third tip should actually be applied to all forms of photography. And it's about creating depth in your image and using the surroundings around you to create natural framings for your photograph so that they again stand out 
against all of your competition. So pretty much anyone can take a natural, just straight on photo like this, but when you start incorporating things in your foreground and background, such as trees, branches, bushes, other people, you start creating depth in your image that really makes it a lot more interesting and sets it apart from other people. Another really cool way to add depth to your image is to find natural framings, things like this, trees, branches, bushes that literally encompass the entire frame of your image. This way you're incorporating nature into the actual composition of your photograph. Just experiment with different ways to add depth to your image, find natural framings, but always keep your eye out to the location around you so you can try to add where you are into the actual composition of your photograph. Because it looks cool and making a cool photograph is becoming a good photographer. So work on it, uh, but just keep playing with it. Okay, so the fourth tip is actually kind of a game changer when it comes to portrait photography. The best portraits always have a splash of light in the subject's eyes. It's referred to as a catch light. So there's actually a few ways to obtain this result. I'm gonna show you two of them, but having that pop of light in your subject's eyes will bring your photos to life. And more importantly, when you show someone the image, their eyes are gonna go straight to your subject's eyes, which makes a very good photograph. Tag makes babies. <laughs> Yo, what's up? I'm single, ready to mingle. You want Get the camera off him, what are you doing? <laughs> so the first way to obtain this result is by positioning your subject so that the sun catches their actual eye. This is the most obvious way to do it. It's not always the most flattering for everything else, but it gets light into the eye, which makes a little pop. The second method of actually capturing that is by using a bounce like we brought today, which will literally work in every scenario. So I recommend every photographer should have a bounce. If you need any convincing, just check out a photo without a catch light versus a photo with a very strong catch light. Notice how in the second photograph, the subject's eyes really pop. That's what you want to capture in an image. That's why a lot of big studios use professional light. But for us, we're going to use the sun and this little bounce thing. Looks like this. But honestly, it's details like this and all the other tips from this video that really take your portrait photography from standard to extraordinary. And it only gets even better when you start using a lot of these tips and tricks together in conjunction with one another. And pretty much that's it. We are going to go snowboard and Sawyer take it away from the studio at home, but not, not without a very cool montage first. Go. to go home. So we're back, we're in the studio, and I have one final tip I wanna give you. If you ever have a model or a subject that just seems very uncomfortable, tell them to close their eyes, get your camera in focus, get everything ready, and go three, two, one, open. And the second they open their eyes, take the photograph, and that is the most naturally relaxed their face will ever be. I actually use that tip a ton today. I just figured I'd throw it in at the end because a lot of people don't really know how to do that. And it's a lifesaver when you're shooting with people who aren't like true professionals. So I really hope you guys enjoyed, maybe took something away from this video. If you guys have any tips or tricks of your own for portrait photography, please leave them down in the comments below so we can start like a little discussion together about it. But I also wanna give a massive thank you to the sponsor of this video, backcountry.com, not just for supporting the channel and helping us to create this video, but for actually caring about the environment. They've partnered with the Nature Conservancy since 2008 to help protect lands and waters that like all life depends on. So just thank you for trying to make the world a better place. We really appreciate it as well as supporting me and the channel. But if you're looking for like any outdoor apparel or accessories, I highly recommend backcountry.com and you can get 15% off your first order when you use Sawyer 15. Pretty easy to remember, it's just my name and then the number 15. But they also give free two day shipping on all orders over 50 bucks within the US. So check them out, show them love. They've showed us love and I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. We make new film and photography related videos every single Thursday and Sunday. Well, not so many Thursdays as much as we make them every single Sunday. And other than that, I hope you guys took something away from this video and I can't wait to see the photos you start creating. And until next Sunday, remember, stay motivated, stay inspired, and never stop creating. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.